a quick video showing the problems of using the wrong carburetor for the car and uh, how do you how you understand how the carburetor works a little bit and uh, a way to fix it so I had I got this carburetor for about ten dollars practically a gift and uh, I just threw it on now the car drives really well with this carburetor but uh, sometimes it'll just die it'll just stall and and people usually think the bigger the better, but not necessarily. So I've had this problem on the DeSoto because again, I had a carburetor that was too high flow. And carburetors are sucking in air and they regulate how much air is sucked in and that's proportional to the engine. So just watch what happens when I actually block off the carburetor partially. my hand and want, notice the difference. So we actually have too much air going into the carburetor. And you'll notice, notice now the vacuum gauge when I do that. I think there's also a way I can reduce the flow of air by closing the choke here but it's not really a proper fix how it, it makes the engine go faster when I reduce when I close off some of the carburetor so I've if you do some research but I'll just say it here again but there's a lot to do with CFM which is cubic feet per minute of air going into the engine larger engines with larger displacements uh, they're sucking in they require more air and consequently the uh, the size of the the hole actually on the bottom of the carburetor should be bigger to allow more air to flow in and I'm not in <clears throat> I'm not gonna get into many details but that's the general concept now when you put a, a larger diameter carburetor on a smaller engine then it's got a much bigger hole and the pressure is reduced Kind of thing so that's why when I block it off it actually improves performance of the engine so there's a carburetor where I actually uh, had a plate to close the top of the carburetor and it just had a few holes on it um, it's that's kind of the uh, <laughs> the uh, you kind of, that's when you that's what I call a fixing the symptoms instead of the actual problem um, so ideally you need to get the right carburetor but I really like the uh, when I'm driving with this carburetor the engine is very very quiet now I've ordered a new one um, and I also have a different carburetor which is at the uh, Autolite uh, 1100 uh, which was used for a Mustang but you see the thing is it's like I said before it's all to do with displacement so if you get a carburetor from an engine that's got the same or similar displacement then it should work perfectly so the Rambler here this engine is a 195.6 um, and the, 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 the engine on that on the Mustang for the Autolite 1100 is the 200 so from 196 to 200 that's only for 
Um, that's only a four CID displacement difference, which is very small. So the carburetor should work. Um, but as you can see, you can still use pretty much any carburetor. But if you go too big, then the carburetor, a carburetor that's too big might also dump too much gas in. And that's a problem too. Because uh, then it'll flood the engine, it'll stall the engine. Um, so I'm still in doubt whether or not I should uh, keep this carburetor, similar carburetor. And, and th then again, there's a filter, there's the air filter. Right now there's no air filter. And the air filter does restrict a little bit of airflow, but probably not that much. So back then, people would have, certainly a neighbor or somebody would have known exactly what to do. And they just have the knowledge. See, I have the know-how, but I don't really have the knowledge because I wasn't born in that era. But they'd certainly, somebody from that era would certainly uh, be able to know exactly which carburetor interchange. Whereas for me, I have to do a lot of ass work, which is sitting down for a long time, searching, researching, and then experimenting. Um, or I can just try to get the proper carburetor that the manual calls for. <laughs> so I might, might also do that. But the other problem is the linkages. Uh, even if it's the right carburetor, this engine was not ever really in this car. Uh, this is a, so there are some slight differences. So I actually have to manufacture, I have to make the uh, linkages and all that, um, which kind of takes up some time. But uh, I, I can drive it perfectly fine this way. Like there's no, it will stall sometimes, like I said, um, and then I just wait a few minutes, maybe two, two, three minutes, and I start it up again, and and off I go again. So it's still it's still a very good carburetor, still a very good car, and uh, you can still drive it perfectly fine. But it is a little bit annoying. Um, another thing that I'd like to say is. Uh, some of these carburetors, like this is, as you can see, it's not a new carburetor. Um, and I do know how to fix them, how to repair them, how to rebuild them. The thing is, uh, these things, they have seals on them. And if you get an original carburetor, the seals were designed for uh, leaded gas without ethanol. And nowadays you have ethanol, you don't have the lead in gas. And what happens is... The ethanol actually reacts and it destroys the seals, um, the older seals, that could happen. And I mean, it's just over time, you know, this thing is probably 60 years old. You have to change some rubber parts. Um, but I kind of adopted the modern day mentality of, it's just easier, I could repair it, I could tear it open, I've actually opened it before. I could look for the rebuild kit, I could make the rebuild kit, but it's just too much work and time which I don't have right now. So nowadays if you have a little bit of knowledge, it's just easier to just replace the parts rather than try to repair them. Um, it's easier and sometimes cheaper, it's definitely faster. So because I don't really have the time, I just went ahead and I bought another carburetor. Um, and again, I'm just saying that because it's not that you can't fix these things. Um, if you just have easy access to parts, it's just a lot of times it's not uh, worth the time and effort and the hassle to try to replace, to try to repair them. And again, that's a thing that another reason why it's even easier to have a classic car than most people think. Because these parts are, most of the parts are readily available. Uh, they're easy to fix, like I just need to remove two bolts, that one, that one, and then uh, disconnect the fuel line and disconnect the vacuum line. And as you can see, we're actually getting a little bit of uh, vapors here, gas vapors. I don't know if you can see that. It's 
So the carburetor is flooding a little bit. And again, that could be due to the fact that uh, there's too much air going in, or it could just be that <laughs> that's what you get for a $10 carburetor. But it's already cleared out, so. Uh, the float, I we did do a float adjustment on it. Um, and it does seem to have improved. So we might actually go ahead and bend the float tab a bit more. But it's it's a quick fix and I've already got some fancy equipment there. <laughs> so yeah, that's why like I was saying it's it's even easier to have a classic car. Uh, in some ways easier than it would have been to have a classic car back during the uh, during the time it was built. I think access to these parts is a lot cheaper now. Maybe, maybe, I'm not too sure. All right, I hope this uh, helps. And uh, so if you get, if, basically if you get an engine that sometimes stalls or not, it's not running really correctly. Um, and you think you've got everything, like it's got nice power, nice uh, takeoff, everything is checked and you can't really find the problem. That's a mysterious problem. Couldn't be the flow. So just try blocking off the carburetor. Uh, partially blocking. If you block it completely, obviously it'll get nowhere and the engine won't stall. Um, but yeah, just, just a quick test. Very easy. <laughs> Very easy to diagnose, uh, do diagnostics tests on these cars now. Very easy to test and find problems. And just put your hand, just put something over block the airflow a little bit and see how that changes and again you, sh you can just hear the sound of the engine basically you're trying to get the engines the engine to the highest rpm possible with the lowest amount of fuel uh, that's optimization right that's uh, efficiency too um, so what I here's a I'm kind of going off topic here but uh, what I'd like to do is Reduce the gas to the minimum until the car starts to die and then back off again. Uh, and then back off a bit more until we get the highest, highest idle, highest RPM possible. Um, and then just don't go over that too much. Maybe just a quarter of a turn or on the uh, mixture adjustment screw, which in this case happens to be that one there. Can't see it. But I'll leave that for another video. Hope this helps.